So you just bought a brand new multi-needle embroidery machine, but you have no idea what supplies you need to purchase. Hello creators and friends. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so excited to have you here today. If it's your first time here, I just want you to know that I appreciate you clicking on this video today. So I'm so excited to share with you who the co-host of today's show is. Hey guys, it is Miss Kelly, Kelly Kane, the embroidery, the embroidery nurse. nurse. So a brief introduction about Kelly is she is a wife, a mother, a small business owner, and she is my kind YouTube friend. Okay, I'm not bragging on you, girlfriend, but I just have to list a few things, okay? Kelly Payne is an extremely credible source for all things embroidery related. So Kelly is the host of a successful embroidery YouTube channel, and you'll be able to find her link posted down below. She is the owner of a successful Etsy embroidery shop, and she is the creator of Embroidery Aid, which is the environment in which she's created for all things embroidery, where she specializes in tips, tricks, and tools of the trade for all things machine embroidery. So you, my friend, are in the right place. Today's video will capture the top 10 items that both Kelly and I use every single day in our embroidery businesses. Hey guys, it's Kelly, the embroidery nurse. Woo -hoo! So fun to be doing a collaboration today. What I love about it is the fact that we're gonna talk about supplies that we both love And they are, when we wrote them down, we, we weren't together when we did it. And the things that we both chose were five different items. So I think that's awesome because what works in your studio and what is essential to you might be different from what's essential to everybody else. You just kind of learn what your, you know, most awesome pieces are that you can't do without. So number 10 on the list is a USB extender. The reason why you're gonna to wanna to make this purchase is because you want to lessen the wear and tear that you have on your machine. I would much rather replace this couple dollar item than have to replace the interface on your embroidery machine. So let's just say that this is your embroidery machine and this is the part right here where you normally would stick in your USB card, right? So you're constantly sticking it in, sticking it out, and maybe you have some wear and tear on that area or some scratches. So this USB extender is gonna prevent any damage on your machine. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna plug it in right here. This is never gonna leave your machine, all right? It just stays plugged in constantly. And this end part right here is what you're gonna use. You're gonna get your USB card and all you're gonna do is plug it in. And through this device, it's gonna transport your, de your designs to your embroidery machine. And instead of constantly damaging this area right here, you would much rather wanna replace this little cord and you wanna make your embroidery machine last. out and I'm going to start with mine. The number nine most popular item in my shop is a seam ripper. Dun, dun, dun. So, you know, a lot of the machines come with one. Um, it might be similar to this. This is one you can buy for like 99 cents, literally at the like Joann's or whatnot. Seam rippers are so important. You might think, well, what would I need that for? Like, I'm not sewing. I'm not, you know, doing that when I'm embroidering. But you will find at times 
means you might be making a few mistakes and a seam ripper is what's going to, or for me at least, there's my puppy, um, help you remove the stitches so that you can salvage an item. And I also, like I monogram um, several different pillow sets and it, because of the size of those and, you know, different hoops and whatnot, I do have to take the um, pillows apart. So a seam ripper is very important for that. I have found over time that I like to use a more ergonomic, is that a word? Um, is that the way you say it? So I love this one and this is by Nifty Notions. And what I love about it, first of all, it's got one on each side. So there's that, but it just gives you a, you know, a large handle to hold on to. So it makes it easier. So there's actually one on both sides. I don't think there, well, yeah, actually this one is a little bit um, smaller than the one on this side. You can kind of see that when it's up close. What's also neat is it's got these little rubber ends and these rubber ends, you can kind of rub against the fabric to, to take the um, thread away as well. It specifically says it's a double-sided seam ripper with small and large blades on opposite ends and you can use the rubbery tips as erasers to clear threads from fabric. So this is definitely a fun one to use. Again, you can use a simple one like this, but if you're having to remove a ton of stitches, something that you can actually hold in your hand and have a better grasp of is going to suit you so much better in the long run. So that's my number nine. Number eight is a pair of nice Ginger duckbill scissors. They are the curved scissors. They look like this. So these type of scissors are extremely sharp. They have definitely lasted the test of time. If you are into any type of applique where you're needing to cut around the corners, cut around the edges, you need to lift up fabric. And I also wanted to add that if you are into making key fobs and you're having trouble using regular scissors to cut around the key fob, these are extremely sharp and will perfectly cut around your key fobs. I highly recommend these duckbill scissors. The purpose of the rounded bill is so that it's smooth across your fabric and that when you're working on those applique pieces and you have to pull up the fabric, that it will not damage or stab or poke a hole through your fabric. So you wanna make sure that you actually do watch some tutorial videos on how to properly use duckbill scissors because it will definitely blow your mind. It's a tiny little investment in your embroidery endeavors. However, you are making an investment in yourself when you make this purchase. They're extremely sharp, they last, they cut like butter, and they're my favorite. I stand by the Ginger duckbill scissors and I will not be changing to a different brand anytime soon. Okay, number seven. If you guys have ever watched anything that I do, I just kind of joke that I literally don't change needles for any reason. I really don't, unless something is broken or just not working. And the only needle that I use for every project that I ever do is an 8012 needle and the Microtex Sharp Needles. So these are very important in my shop. It is a Microtex Sharp Needle 8012s. And I use this for everything. I use this for baby clothing. I use this for canvas bags. For me, this is all I've really ever needed. And so to me, this is very essential. And I always have several packs of these on hand since I've got several machines that I work with um, just to make sure that I have what I need when I need it when something breaks or seems like it's working a little bit dull. Um, so this is very important to me. The Microtex Sharp Needles 8012. Number six is Water Soluble Stabilizer, also known as WSS, as you might see in some of the groups or the forums, and you're like, what is WSS? I have no idea. It stands for Water Soluble Stabilizer. And the way that it works is you get your fabric that has a very high pile or a very high nap. Um, for example, it would be a towel fabric, a teddy bear fabric, or most commonly used when you're embroidering any kind of minky fabric. So you're gonna wanna take your fabric, so it'll be like this, and then you'll put your 
water soluble stabilizer on top of the fabric and then you'll embroider it. Some people like to fasten the water soluble stabilizer. I don't fasten it when I use it. I just place it right on top of the fabric and I let the machine do what it needs to do. It works just fine. You will never catch me without a bowl of water soluble stabilizer. This particular bowl is from Pellon. I just purchased this entire bowl at Joann's. It's called Solufilm and it's Pellon series number 551. Five is going to be scissors that I use for applique. And these are Fiskars micro tip scissors. Let me just show you how essential they are to me. These are the ones that I just gather just to show you that are in my shop. These are all the same thing, um, kind of balls at different times. I think this one just has a little flex grip on it. Yes, I love these for applique work. One reason I love these, first of all, they're very sharp. So they do a really good job um, getting into small areas. They've got really sharp blades. Uh, they're, you know, made right here. It says ideal for fabric. They have a lifetime warranty, which, you know, didn't realize that till I even looked at it. But it even specifically says right there, cut intricate details. And that's what you're doing with applique work. What I love about them also is the price point is so low that I can throw these all through my room here so that I always have one handy. I use these at the machines for cutting threads, you know, when I'm changing out colors and I use these for applique work. So they come in very handy and they're very essential in my embroidery room. Number four on the countdown would have to be the size eight inch by nine inch Mighty Hoops. This size of Mighty Hoops is my absolute favorite. I use it every single day. I definitely feel that the eight by nine size is the most versatile and it's the most common hoop size that I use in my embroidery business. You could easily use the size eight by nine Mighty Hoop to hoop totes, to hoop blankets. If you're working on kids t-shirts or even adult t-shirts, the size eight by nine is the perfect fit. All you have to do is just wave your Mighty Hoop in front of it and it will attach to the back part. And just like that, within a few seconds, you already hooped your fabric. So the number three item for my embroidery shop is Heat and Bond Light. You guys, this is a game changer in the world of applique. If you've never used this, you better run out and buy it. It is what you adhere to the back of your fabric before you actually use it for applique. What it does is it just gives more stability to it. It allows you to cut it at a cleaner line. It prevents the fraying and it overall allows it to adhere to the shirt after you've finished stitching and what's amazing about it i mean literally anytime someone will post on like an embroidery thread you know what can i do different or how could i improve my um, shirt and they'll show a picture and the number one question that seasoned embroiderers will ask is did you use heat and bond light because it truly will change your game when it comes to the professionalism the look the cleanliness of all your appliques. This is very important. There's a lot of different ways you can buy it. This is buying a five and fourth yard. I generally buy it by the bolt uh, because I do use it and I just pull it out, you know, as I need it and cut it as I need it. But you guys, I just bought the mammoth. Look at this. 75 yards of heat and bond light. What I love about this is it rolls out. So I'll be, should be able to roll out what I need and then I can close the box. Woo, I will, I will probably have this, I will have this for a long time. Now I do a lot of applique, but 75 yards of heat and bond light is going to last forever. So I'm super excited about the investment in that. Whoop, whoop, get you some heat and bond light.
So number two on the list is Phil Tech Magnetic Bobbins. All right, so you're gonna hear this comment all the time. People are gonna ask you, why do you need pre-wound bobbins? Why don't you just wound the bobbin yourself? So let me tell you, when you own an embroidery business, you do not have time to be sitting and winding bobbins. Not only that reason, but when you use magnetic bobbins, you're gonna maintain a consistent tension whenever it's actually embroidering your item, as opposed to when you're winding your own bobbin, sometimes it's loose, sometimes it's tight. You wanna have that same consistency so you're offering your customer the exact same product, whether that person buys something from you a month ago or that person buys something from you a month from now, you wanna be offering that same consistency so that they know what they're gonna be purchasing, right? Let me show you real quick how it works. You'll see a side with a magnet and then you'll see a side that doesn't have a magnet. So you already know if your case is metal that you're gonna stick the magnet side to the bobbin. Did you hear that click? It just fit in there so seamlessly. All you're gonna do is you pull your thread through the little hole there and there you have it. I will take pre-wound bobbins over winding up bobbins myself any day. Okay, my number one supply that I use in my embroidery studio. You guys, the funny thing about it is it's the least expensive item. It's not even $2. What could it possibly be? It's the Snag Nabbit. Woo, woo, woo. You guys, I was going crazy with, in the beginning of my you know, practicing and learning when I would have little loops on certain, you know, items after they'd finished embroidering. And I'm just talking about one or two, but to me that ruined the project. And I was just so frustrated and I know better than to cut them because then, you know, later the rest of your embroidery can unravel and no one wants that. So I did my research, talked to other folks, which is really important and a good suggestion if you have questions. And this is what they, you know, directed me to get. It's a snag nabbit. It's made by Dritz. And basically on one end, I'm going to show you the ones that I have right here in my own pin. Mine are all crooked because I use them so much. But if you can, t this should be straight. It comes straight. One end is, like that I'm holding with my fingers here is textured. And the other end is just sharp like a needle. And literally every single one that I have is crooked. Uh, because I stick them through such, you know, so many different items and they just kind of bend, which it doesn't change the integrity of the of the snag nabbit. But I have tons of them because if I don't have one, I would panic. So I always have one that's unopened. When I open, you know, the one that I have unopened, I, I make sure I order another one. But it's just great because it, it, it will, you push it through the fabric. So you literally, if you have a snag on something, then you literally will take the sharp end, put it right against that thread, and then you pull it through the item. And then the textured end will actually pull that little bit of thread through to the other side. So it completely keeps the integrity of your item, but makes it look clean and fresh. The other great thing this is used for, if you use a single needle machine, a lot of designs have jump stitches. Oh, jump stitches. Man, those can be a beast. And in certain designs that, you know, certain digitizers, you know, really incorporate a lot more than others. 
and it can make it really time consuming and really just frustrating when you're done because you have to go back and cut all the jump stitches. Well, if you have one of these, you basically will go in and cut the jump stitch and then just pull the piece of thread through, pull the piece of thread through by pushing this through the fabric, through the shirt, through the clothing item or whatever it is that you're working on, a pillow, whatever. So it just really, I mean, again, it's not even $2, but I could not survive in this room with these machines running without one. It really, I, I have it at my um, shipping station because generally I will um, have a station set up where I do all of my packaging and where I put things in poly mailers and whatnot. And I have one of these over there specifically because I want to make sure I catch that last minute little thread that I might see before I put it into the package to be sent on. So that way I know it just looks perfect before it heads out the door. And just for funsies, because the Snag Nabbit is Kelly's most favorite item, two lucky creators are gonna walk away with one of these Snag Nabbits. To enter the Snag Nabbit giveaway, you have to be subscribed to my YouTube channel, which is Shayna Kraus, and you have to follow me on Instagram. You can find my Instagram at KrauseCreations100. Not only that, but you have to be subscribed to Kelly's YouTube channel, which is the Embroidery Nurse, and then you have to be following both of Kelly's Instagram accounts, which is the Embroidery Aid and also the Embroidery Nurse. We hope to see you there. So there you have it, you guys, how fun. 10 different items that we consider essential in our embroidery studios. I can't wait for you guys to comment and let us know what's essential to you. And I hope you learned something. This was so much fun doing a collaboration. It's always great to work with other fellow embroiderers. We really do have a fun community, those that work in machine embroidery, and it's so great to meet others along this journey. And if you have questions, please ask either of us because we would be happy to answer anything that you might have along the way and help you on your journey wherever you are in that. Have a great day and happy stitching! So you, you right there. You, the one watching this video, if you learned anything from today's video or if you just want to say hi to Kelly or I, please feel free to type it in the comments down below. Again, all of Kelly's social medias and her website, all of that will be also linked in the comments down below. Make sure you hop on over to her channel and show her some love. Thank you. Bye. Kelly, the embroidery nurse, I just want to say thank you so much for co-hosting today's show. It was an honor working with you and I want to say that I wish you the best in all your future endeavors.